think I found someone to produce my next album. His name's Vaughn Daniels. It says he was tried for murder. He was acquitted. Hi, uh, Lauren and Greg, how are you doing? Good, yeah, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Are you okay, Greg? You under the weather? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what it is? Like, I've got attention deficit disorder, and as it's going, I'm just grabbing more and more things. I'm like Steve Martin in the jerk. I'm just getting something from around me. <laughs> By the end of the day, we're just seeing your nose hot popping. <laughs> That's it. I'm like, <laughs> next thing is going to be this. Uh, UFO uh, ukulele, and there's this, there's there's more things coming. I've got a monkey lamp that's going to be on my lap soon. I can't wait. You would not think this is a press day for a horror movie. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's really what. It. Congratulations on the movie. I re I loved it. It was re great. Um, Thank you. I'm a big fan of werewolves movies, so um, I always kind of go in with a bit of hesitation, reticence, hoping that it's, it's going to uh, live up to um, my all-time favorite, which is obviously American. Werewolf in London, which was a, it's, Amelia's one of, it's, I think it's her favorite werewolf movie as well. Yeah. Um, can you tell me what it was about this particular werewolf movie that um, that pulled you in? Uh, because it's it's not your typical werewolf tropes. It's very different. The trappings are very difficult, difficult, very different to other other movies that deal with this, these themes. No. Yes, I mean, I I hadn't seen very many werewolf movies before this. Um, I saw American Werewolf in London. Uh, because it was one of Amelia's recommendations. Um, but I, you know, I, I know that werewolves are inherently male. Um, most of them are male. I think Ginger Snaps is the only one I can think of. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what that came to my mind when I was thinking before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, so for me, like, before the werewolf thing, <laughs> I mean, that was obviously just such a fun element and, you know, makes a lot of sense to kind of represent what this character is going through um and the manifestations of kind of the monsters inside of her that are blocking her creative genius um but that aside I, I was really drawn to it a because Amelia was directing it and I'd worked with her mm -hmm. the year prior on Bleed yeah. With Me and just love love her as a director um and then the fact that it's a female uh lead character and that she's queer and it's just you know part of the story it's not the focal point of the movie yeah. uh was very progressive and then and then also the music was a huge huge uh selling point for me yeah because i think you're you're i don't know if you're full-time you just might know that you i've read that you are a magician a musician as well a magician yeah. a musician as well right <laughs> i pick a card any <laughs> uh, <laughs> no i um it's actually i do know one magic trick i'll do it for you one time um but no i am a, i am a musician i am a songwriter as well i've been writing for not to date myself but like 15 years um maybe longer and um so for me as someone who really values music and like and lyricism and songwriting myself it was so cool that that was also an element of this film I would have you know I would have been happy with just queer werewolf but she was a queer pop star werewolf and I was like yeah, I'm sold. three or four birds with one stone no, really. <laughs> yeah. what about that's like that's when you get all cherries on the the, the wheel at the uh, <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> exactly <laughs> jackpot Ding. Ding. yeah jackpot yeah. <laughs> and what about Greg what was it about being a member of a nineties boy band that had been tried for murder that pulled you into the <laughs> art imitating life my friend art <laughs> imitating life. It was, uh, something I tried to keep hidden but it just emerged now, you know to me the idea of uh, of of the sacrifices that you need to make to create great art was was the the compelling thing I think sometimes in my life I've been nice for its own sake and it makes me sick kind of you know like when when we're just pleasant to people and we're, we're not true to ourselves we're not true to anything and particularly you know being Canadian which is such a polite people you know I, I grew up that like don't make waves and just you know just get along and it, it it was something that I struggled with a lot as a young artist because at times you can't like at times you have to be a bastard and I don't mean that in a bullying people on set way but I mean you got to give shit up to get to the truth like you yeah. gotta you, you gotta you gotta be able to take that space and own that space and not apologize for yeah for I know what you mean thing. yeah I know what you're trying to yeah, say right? you gotta you need sometimes you need to say no because otherwise people will just take control of you yeah. if you don't say no from the from the word go then you've kind of lost yeah, it which is pretty much what this 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 film does deal with in a way yeah Exactly. And it takes it to an extreme and it uses the, the, the you know, the, the werewolf allegory 
for that. But that beast inside of us is also the most beautiful and pure artist inside of us as well. And, and I think that it's, we have to dance with that shadow for a little while to figure out where we need to stand as people, as authentic people, because I don't think it serves anyone to, to, to be liars and to be fakes and to be, you know, just part of this shuffling herd. And, and what does it mean to be that wolf, to stand alone, to be alone, to hunt what is most important to you? Uh, so that that was appealing and then the the benefit was getting to work with this kid here and Amelia and Catherine they were so fantastic like they were just so incredible and and obviously you know it's a smaller budget film so you, you have limitations with what you can do and how much time you have and but creativity solves so many of those things and what creativity can't solve passion does and intelligence and they they all three of them brought so much to the project that for me, it was just a joy to get to come and work and to collaborate and to find little moments and and just be a part of this this family making a, a, a little horror film that that turned out to be quite resonant, which is mm. nice. Mr. Daniels, I'm glad you're here, Gray. This is my girlfriend, Charlie. Hi. I get the creeps since you got here. Your music is that's beautiful. I can smell it all over you. And something primal. You need to use that. I'm really curious about the relationship that Vaughn and Gray share on screen because it's a very it's something that I haven't really seen before because it's there's a really strong connection that without giving anything away, there's a really strong bond there. But at the same time, there's something that's kind of separating them like like two opposed magnets, no? How did you find just the right balance? Because I I, I imagine it was a really tricky tightrope walk for the two of you, you know to get just the right balance for the relationship between the two of you I, I think that we were really lucky that um you know greg and i just immediately kind of had this chemistry like we just we got along immediately it was very easy to um admire him to like have this admiration for him you know he he's also just like he's such a badass he's he's so good at what he does so just in, in real life I already had this admiration for him, right? As this like figure who's, who's, you know, been in the industry so much longer than me and not so much, Greg. I mean, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. He's still, young, he's still a young man. Um, but, <laughs> but um, so yeah, we kind of had that immediate connection and it was kind of inexplicable in a way. And I think that that is mirrored without giving too much away that that is mirrored in the story between between gray and vaughn i mean they they instantly have this like really deep meaningful connection but for gray she doesn't really understand where that's coming from uh vaughn knows but gray doesn't so it's it's just this i think you know what was happening in real life was also just kind of mirrored in the performances um so that was really cool. That was just really great that it worked out that way. And and on, and on my side, like I also just had such a, a, a laugh and such a, it was such a, a joy to work with Lauren. But from an, an acting point of view, you know, on the page, it's a very um, calculating and Machiavellian dynamic, which, you know, is part of it. But when Lauren started singing for the first time, and it was very early in the shoot, there was something that I felt very vulnerable to that voice. And there was like this, like, I don't know if it's lost youth or there was a sense of like yearning or something that is gone that I can't quite touch that affected me. Um, and it changed the arc of the relationship for me because instead of always being in control and pushing, there was a great sense of, there was a fragility underneath it, which to me was kind of exciting. Like I, I like as an actor being confused, you, you sort of, you read, a character and you you have some ideas or whatever but then you play with another human being and something happens between you that's just it's alchemy it's magic it's it can't um you can't put your finger on it but then you have to go with it and the characters change and the story changes as a result and i think becomes fuller and richer because of those those accidents you know the heart trips all over itself and and we it, you know things spark memories in us and regrets or or missed opportunities or, or or just time passing and and when that becomes part of the work it becomes very human which to me is exciting even in a werewolf film even yeah. holding it to the <laughs> uh -huh. blanket. Uh, 
obviously it's, it's very human and the 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 the, the werewolf serves as a kind of a um rather than the beast itself is kind of talking about the industry and, and kind of the, what you're what Lauren what you're going through now in the film um mm -hmm. but at the same time the transformation is is kind of pivotal um yeah. to what to everything that you've gone through through the film now so when it came to the actual transformation the physical transformation for both of you how did you go about that not just yourself but also kind of with Amelia and, and with with the special effects team to make it come across so that it was like we've seen in other films, but also that it kind of emoted, it portrayed these kind of sensations that you've been going through in the film. Yeah, um, I think that obviously having the practical effects, the practical, um, the actual prosthetics and everything um, on me was super helpful because um, you just immediately become that character like you you know if there's any breaks in between scenes where you kind of step out of it for a second you can go look in the mirror and go okay that's what I look like and you're just right back there um and I I think it was very cathartic for me um to sort of let out that like monster in myself um there's definitely a little like feral kid inside of me at all times uh, and I, I grew up very much that way like you know I was very tomboy and just like um yeah like a, a feral little kid and I feel like that's always just with me so it was cool to kind of let that out and you know also just being conf like actually confined in that sound booth um was a bit terrifying you know the the, mm -hmm. the idea that this is happening to you and it's never happened to you before and you don't understand it, but it feels really right, but you're terrified of it and you can't escape it. You literally can't get away from it. Yeah. Um, it was very, very cathartic and, and so prepared, fun. I prepared to... you for the pandemic because that's, I mean, you, it sounded like exactly. you were describing what we've just been gone through and now we're going through now, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was really, really fun for me. Um, I, another thing I'll, I'll say is just like, I was thinking a lot about transformations and about how women are constantly kind of transforming themselves every day in, in different yeah. situations. So kind of the concept of a transformation is like not as crazy to me or like, you know, I was like, oh, okay. This is just like an extreme version of something that I do every day in my life, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that, that was really cool to sort of uh, play around with. There's nothing that you have to hide from me. I suffer from hallucinations. I hallucinate that I'm turning into an animal. What's wrong, you okay? Let's wrap up then. I'd love to know what you uh, you are up to uh, in the near future. I've seen that, Greg, you've got quite a few uh, projects on the go. And I know that... Um, Lauren, you do something called Humble Core. I mean, I was surprised. Yeah. I was because I'd seen you in this horror movie, and then all of a sudden I see you do this kind of satire and slapstick yeah, and comedy yeah. stuff. No, can you briefly tell us a little bit about what you've got to, coming up with those those projects? Yeah, go ahead, Greg. Oh, um, I, yeah, I've got a couple of. Uh, I've got a movie called Marlene, which is uh, coming out. Uh, we did a couple of festivals. I've got a movie called Fight Machine. Uh, God, I'm shooting something right now that I can't say what I'm shooting, but it's in the superhero genre -y right. thing. Um, another one called Trigger Point as well, now with Barry. Oh Pepper. yeah, 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 with Paul McClure really cool. and Barry. <laughs> right, and one called Super Dicks, where I play an Alec Jones kind of a uh, podcast conspiratorial podcast madman, which was a lot of fun as well. Yeah, I forgot about those. Thanks. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, let me tell you what you're shooting. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so for myself, uh, I mean, obviously, Bleed With Me is is coming out as well. Right, yeah. um, it'll be later this summer. Right. Um, then I'm working on, uh, yeah, several personal projects. So I started Humble Core with my roommate. So it's kind of like a comedy production house that we've started, um, focusing on sketch comedy, uh, like very character driven, kind of mockumentary, satirical stuff. Um, we are working on a, a feature length mockumentary about a, a Canadian band that gets invited to Woodstock and then the Canadian government pulls them out 
So their manager fakes a Woodstock in Woodstock, New Brunswick to make them mm -hmm. think they went. Um, yeah. And then I, I'm also, I'm also writing a, <laughs> a, a short film um, with a friend of mine, just kind of, it's going to be kind of an experimental improv improvised short film um, uh, about two best friends, two queer best friends. And it's kind of about the, uh, the value of platonic intimacy in the queer community. So. Really mm -hmm. well, thanks so much. Sorry. We were best friends, Lauren. How could you have a movie <laughs> Yeah, about it's that? actually great. <laughs> why, what, great. Why? I just, <laughs> this is an awkward. We'll, we'll talk later, yeah, I just put we'll a stunner in the works. The whole Sorry. press day is going it's downhill from now. I didn't to make this awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks, Thanks Lauren. Much. Wish you the best to luck and I hope to speak to you sometime soon. Take care. All right, right. take care. Thank all you. right, all the best. Bye now. <laughs>